It's Sabbath School time! Hi everyone, welcome to It's Sabbath School time! I'm so glad that you are here to join us for another episode. I'm your host, Auntie Simone, and I am just so happy to be here. And I hope that you are too. I'll give you a moment to share the program with everyone if you have not already. All right, well, we are going to hear from Cameron and Khalil Dean from the Irving Seventh-day Adventist Church who will be doing our welcome. Then we will hear from Karen Irving who will be doing our opening prayer and he attend the Ten City Seventh-day Adventist Church. W is for welcome and we, we welcome you to Sabbath School this morning. Hello everyone, let us pray. Dear Lord, please protect everyone here today and online as well. Make them prosper in any, in any way that you seem fit and use your great power to, be, to protect everyone around the world. Let this Sabbath school be a blessing to everyone around the world. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Welcome to another episode of What's Inside Auntie Simone's Fruit and Vegetable Basket. You know Auntie Simone loves to teach you a little bit about fruits and veggies. Well, I have a riddle for you today and I want to see how well you know your fruits or your vegetables. Here goes. Who am I? I grow below the ground. I can be made into soup. My leaves are delicious to eat too. I can be several colors. I am not usually eaten raw. Again, I grow below the ground. I can be made into soup. My leaves are delicious to eat too. I can be several colors and I am not usually eaten raw. All right, come back next Sabbath to find out what was in Auntie Simone's fruit and vegetable basket. Bye. This week, our special feature section will be done by Rihanna and Savannah Goldsmith. They attend the Spanish Town Seventh-day Adventist Church. The title of this skit is obeying God's commandments. Savannah, did you steal my fifty dollars? No, there's not one fifty dollar in the world. Where did you get that then? From Mommy's pond. So you're breaking God's commandments? What commandments? The commandments God gave to Moses to guide his people. Well if you know them, you say them. <laughs> Commandment 1, thou shalt not have any other God before me. Commandment 2, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Commandment 3, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Commandment 4, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy maid servant, nor thy man servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger, that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the seas and all that in them is, and he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Commandment 5. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Which one do you think is next? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. So just like how you provoke me, I still do not kill you. Commandment 7. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Commandment 8. Thou shalt not steal. Come, on. Come back next week to find out part two to see if Savannah knows what happened to that $50. I'm gonna sing, sing, sing. Yes, it's time to sing. And we are going to hear from Jazari Royal who attend the Port Moore Seventh day Adventist Church. She'll be doing song number one. Song number two will be done by Leah and Layla Brown and Kaylin Jenkins. They attend the Tabernacle of Joy Seventh day Adventist Church. Song number three will be done by Matthew Dunn, who will attend the Portmore Seventh day Adventist Church. Run along, get your instruments, and sing along with them. And give thanks with a grateful heart. 
Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because it's given. Jesus Christ is Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because it's given. Jesus Christ is Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. When darkness filled the sky, the day that Jesus died, in agony upon the blue cross, they took his body down and laid it in a tomb. His friends believed that everything was lost, but when the third day came and darkness turned to light, 
I've walked among the shadows, you wiped my tears away. And I felt the pain of heartbreak, and I've seen the brighter days. And I've prayed prayers to heaven from my lowest place. And I have held your blessings, God, you give and take away. No matter what I have, your grace is enough. And no matter where I am, I'm standing in your love. On the mountain, I will bow my life to the one who sent me there. In the valley, I will lift my eyes to the one who sees me there. When I'm standing on the mountain, I didn't get there on my own. When I'm walking through the valley, I know I am not alone. Young God of the hills and valleys, hills and valleys, God of the hills and valleys, I am not alone. I've watched my dreams get broken, in you I hope again. No matter what I know, I'm safe inside your hands. On the mountain, I will bow my life to the one who sent me there. In the valley, I will lift my eyes to the one who sees me there. When I'm standing on the mountain, I didn't get there on my own. When I'm walking through the valley, I know I am not alone. Your God, the hills and valleys, the hills and valleys, follow the hills and valleys, but I am not alone. Father, you give and take away every joy and every pain, to it all you will remain, over it all. Father, you give and take away every joy and every pain. Do it all, you will remain over it all. I'll be back about my life. In the valleys, I will lift my eyes. Oh. On the mountain, I will walk my life to the one who sent me there. In the valley, I will lift my eyes to the one who sees me there. When I'm standing on the mountain, I didn't get there on my own. When I'm walking through the valley, I know I am not alone. No, I'm not alone. I am not alone, your God of the hills and valleys, hills and valleys, God of the hills, and I am not alone. Hills and valleys, God of the hills and valleys, I am not alone. Hey, our songs are all done, and now it's time for the lesson studies. And we are going to hear from none other than Auntie Frenita, and she will be doing the kindergarten and the primary Sabbath school lessons. Then, Nathaniel Treasure from the Tenth City Seventh day Adventist Church will be doing our junior lesson review. Please get your Bibles and your quarterlies so that you can review along with them. Boys and girls, you can go to www.gracelink.net. There you will find all of the Sabbath school lessons from beginners right through to the junior PowerPoint lessons. There you will also find other resources as we go through the Sabbath school lessons right here on It's Sabbath School Time. Lesson 12. Hello boys and girls, this is Aunt Fernita and I have a wonderful story for you called The Floating Axe Head. Today's memory verse is from Galatians chapter 5 verse 13. It says, Serve each other with love. 
The message for today's story is we can help others even in small ways. Do you think God knows about the tiniest ant crawling along? He does, and He cares about little things. A long time ago, God showed someone how much He cared about a little thing. Elisha was visiting the school of the prophets at Gilgal. Another student is starting today, someone told him, but there is hardly any room for him. This school needs more space. The students liked the prophet's visits. He answered their questions and listened to them. So they told him about the space problem. Prophet Elisha, a student began, "We like it when you come, and we like to have new students, but we have a big problem. We need more room." Prophet Elisha thought about it. The school really was too small. Yes, he agreed. This place is too small. Let's go to the Jordan River. We can build a place where there is plenty of room. Someone suggested, and there are plenty of trees to cut down for a larger building. A bigger place was needed so more students could come and learn about God, so they could tell others. Yes, Elisha encouraged. That is a good idea. Go and get started. Then one of the students said, "Won't you please come with us? You can help us find just the right place." Elisha replied, "I will," and so he went with them, and they met at the river and started working. Lots of trees had to be cut down to build a larger school. Everyone worked hard, chopping and cutting with axes. Suddenly, one of the students cried out, "Oh no! 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 No!" Everyone heard a big splash and turned to look. His axe. The axe head was gone. No wonder the student was upset. An axe was a very expensive tool back in those days. The axe head was made of iron, and it would be very hard to replace. It wasn't mine. The student moaned. I borrowed it. What am I going to do? How am I going to replace it? I just don't know. Elisha hurried to the young man's side. Where did the axe head fall into the river? He asked. The student pointed to the exact spot. There, he said, it just flew into the river right there. Then Elisha did the strangest thing. He picked up a stick and threw it into the water right where the axe head fell in, and up came the axe head floating on the water. Lift it out, Elisha said to the young man. So the young man entered the water and waded to the axe head. He grabbed it and returned to shore where he fixed it to the axe handle. Now everyone knows that things made of iron can't float. So how did this axe head float? It was a miracle. God used Elisha to perform another miracle. Yes, God does care about the little things. He cares if we lose a borrowed tool or favorite toy. He cares all about your needs. This podcast was brought to you by Studio Alpizo and GraceLink.net. For more children's resources, please visit GraceLink.net. Hi, everyone. It's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called "Finally Forgiven." The memory verse is from Luke chapter six, verse thirty-seven. It says, "Forgive." And you will be forgiven. Today's message is God helps me to forgive others. Has anyone you love ever done something that has caused you pain or hurt your feelings? Sari stole from her best friend Misha and then lied about it. She thought no one would ever know, but Sari was caught, and Misha and her family felt very hurt and betrayed. Years later, Sari asked for forgiveness, and Misha forgave her. They became good friends again. Today's story is very similar. Many people were cruel to Joseph. His brothers had sold him into slavery. Potiphar had sent him to prison, but God blessed him. In fact, 
Pharaoh put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Just as Joseph had predicted, according to what God had told him, Egypt had plenty of food for seven years. Each year, Joseph carefully stored the extra grain. He knew that a terrible famine was coming. When the dry years came, Joseph had plenty of grain to sell to the starving people. One day, ten men arrived from a foreign land to buy food. They bowed before Joseph, and as they stood up, he recognized his ten older brothers. He had not seen them since they had sold him into slavery many years before. Joseph wanted to be sure they were different now, so he decided to test them. You are spies, he said. You have come to see how strong we are. Oh, no, sir, we are not, his brothers replied. We have come to buy food for our families. We are all the sons of one man. There were twelve of us. One is still at home, and one is dead. But Joseph was not dead. Bring back your other brother to me, or I will know you are spies, Joseph commanded. Your brother, Simeon, will stay here in prison while you are gone. The worried brothers began their journey home. On the way back, one of them opened his sack and found money. What is this? He called to the others. The money that I paid for this grain? It is in my sack. What will the governor do now? When the brothers reached home, they told their father what had happened. We must take Benjamin back with us, they pleaded. It is the only way to prove that we are not spies, and we need to get Simeon back from Egypt. No, never, their father responded. Joseph is lost to me. I cannot lose another son. A few months later, the brothers went to their father again. Our children will starve, they pleaded. We have no more food. We must go back to Egypt. Their father didn't want to let Benjamin go, but he knew they needed food, and they needed it soon. He finally agreed, and the brothers went back to Egypt. When Joseph saw his younger brother Benjamin, he rushed to his private room to cry. But Joseph had one more test for his brothers. Were they still jealous? Would they be eager to get rid of Benjamin? Fill their sacks, he told his steward, and put my silver cup in Benjamin's sack. Soon the brothers were ready to go home. Joseph's steward did as Joseph said, and the brothers started on their way. A few miles from the palace, Joseph's steward stopped the caravan. He searched the men's sack and found Joseph's cup. Benjamin must return with me to the governor, he declared. The brothers were worried. How could this be happening? What will the governor do? We, we can't leave Benjamin here. What will we tell our father? Your brother Benjamin must stay here, Joseph declared. He will become my slave. Joseph's brother Judah begged that Benjamin be released. I cannot go back to my father without Benjamin, he said. Please, let me stay in his place. Joseph could hide no more. He broke into tears and told his brothers who he really was. He told them about Potiphar's house and the years in prison. He described Pharaoh's dreams and how he had come to be the second most powerful man in Egypt. It was not you who sent me here, he said, forgiving his brothers. It was God. God was with Joseph. God truly wants to be with us, too. All you have to do is ask him. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy. 
for gracelink.net. Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. Post produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. Animation and artwork by Giogo Godoy. The audio engineer was Karel Holness. For more information, please visit gracelink.net. Hello, Sabah everyone. Today, I will be doing the Sabah school lesson. Lesson 12. Did you ever have a bad habit that you wish you could break? Did you notice that more you thought about it, the more it seemed to control you? You may have already discovered that once you admitted to God that you couldn't handle it by yourself, he took over. That was Samson, a well-built man, but a sad-looking man slumped against one of the walls in the temple of Dagan. The temple was located, located in the city of Gaza, where the occasion was he was in prison and the Philistines were celebrating his sentence. He had lifted the massive gates of their hinges and carried them to the top of the hills miles away back then when he had strength. Now he was sitting there getting a little rest ever since the Philistine had learned of his vow and shaved his head off and been blinded and he was grinding in the prison in Gaza. His capture was a huge Philistine, Philistine win. This celebration would honor the god of Dagon. Could, he could sense that the people as usually were crowded into the temple. Samson remembered when God had blessed him with the great physical strength. He recalled major victories, the time he had used the time he had used his bare hands or the jawbone of a donkey where had been no obstacle too big in those days. Samson knew he had started making bad choices. In his choice of friends entertainment, he went against wishes of his parents who pleaded with him. Slowly, these searches had become more important to him than the work of God. Before he knew it, he was blind and helpless and a slave to his enemies. Samson finished feeling sorry for himself. He knew that he had brought his troubles upon himself. Now he felt sorry for the moniker. He was hearing around him. Samson sensed that God heard his silent prayer of helplessness. Dear God, he prayed, when you made me strong, I thought I could do anything I wanted. I thought I was strong, but I could not defeat the facing because I misused the strength you gave me. They have defeated me. Samson could feel God's presence with him. He knew that he was still loved. And that he was forgiven. Now, through Samson's weakness, God proves his strength. Help me, please, Samson called out. The boy who had assigned to lead him from the prison to the temple. I am tired. I want to rest against the pillars. The boy led the shuffling Samson where he could lean evenly against two central pillars. He closed his eyes and prayed again. Then he pushed with all his might. Slowly, the huge, pillar, huge pillars began to crumble. The entire temple shook as the walls collapsed. All the people on the roof and the roof itself caved in on the rest of the people below. Rulers, people alike, along with Samson, were buried in the crumble ruins. Once again, God had won the victory. In spite of the bad choices Samson had made, God have never stopped lo loving him, and when he had stood, stood powerless and humble, uh, he asked God for the victory. God had once again answered. Power point: Victory is a gift from God, not a product of our strength, and that is from the junior lesson. Do you like music just as much as I do? Well. You have no disappointment here on this program. We're going to hear from Aliana Holness, 
from the Spanish Town Seventh Day Adventist Church, and she will be doing song number four. We pray for blessings, we pray for peace, comfort for family, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hands to ease our suffering. And all the while you hear it spoken beneath, yet love us way too much to give us lesser things. Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're there? What if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? We pray for wisdom, your voice to hear. We cry in anger when we cannot feel you near. We doubt your goodness, we doubt your love, as if every promise from your word is not enough. And all the while you hear it desperately, Long that we have faith to believe. Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know your near? What if trials of this life? Are your mercies in disguise? When friends betray us, when darkness seems to win, we know that pain reminds this heart that this is not, this is not our home. It's not our home. Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know your name? What if my greatest disappointments and the aching of this life is the revealing of a greater thirst? This world can't satisfy. What if trials of this life will in the storms your hardest nights? Are your mercies in disguise? Boys and girls, I'm having such a good time, but our program has come to a close. We only get a certain amount of time. I wish we could put more into this program, but it's okay. You always can come back next week for more. All right, our closing prayer will be done by Julissa Nemhard, and she attends the Palm Seventh-day Adventist Church, after which we will hear from Matthew Rutherford from the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church, and he will be doing our goodbye. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for food, shelter, family, friends, and most importantly, life. Lord, please strengthen us as we struggle with the COVID-19 pandemic. As we worship you today, I pray that you will give joy and comfort to each and every one. Lord, please help us to keep trusting you. In your holy name I pray, amen. Bye, Sabbath School. See you next week and please come again. Hello, parents.
guardians, and churches. Would you like to have your child participate in the It's Sabbath School Time program? They can do the welcome, prayer, sing, or play an instrument, say the goodbye, or do a short testimony, praise, poem, short children's story, or skit for the special feature section. Please send your videos to it's Sabbath School Time PSDA at gmail.com. Again, it's Sabbath School Time PSDA at gmail.com. Boys and girls, we use this time to say thank you to God for allowing us to have this program. Our thank you also go to NCU TV and NCU FM, your education and wellness station. We say thank you to the following participants in our program today. Cameron and Khalil did our welcome. Karen did our opening prayer. Rihanna and Savannah did our special feature. Song number one was done by Jazari. Leah and Layla and Kaylin did song number two. Matthew, song number three. Nathaniel did our junior lesson review. Aliana did song number four. Our closing prayer was done by Jalissa and the goodbye was done by Matthew. The It's Sabbath School time team leaders are Jacqueline Bailey Morrison, Children and Adolescent Ministry Leader, Sylvina Williams, a Sabbath School teacher, yours truly, Simone Harris, Sabbath School teacher and producer, and Micaiah Morgan, our assistant producer. Well, boys and girls, it's time for us to go. Yes, I know. But again, come back next Sabbath. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this program with everyone you know. You can find us right here on YouTube, on uh, our Facebook page at the Portmore Seventh Day Adventist Facebook page, Facebook page, and you can share there as well. And also to our faithful listeners and viewers here at NCUFM and NCU TV. Well, I look forward to seeing you next Sabbath. Don't forget to invite a friend to listen on and with you. And as always, have a wonderful Sabbath. Auntie Simone loves you. Goodbye.